Hey everybody, it's Kim. Welcome back to my channel, Bookmarks and Breadsticks. Before we get started, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons down below. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments and hopefully I can hit my goal of 200 subscribers by the end of 2020. 2020, 200, seems like a fun number. I know I've been a little MIA lately. I haven't been posting nearly as many videos in the month of November. There's just been a lot going on in my life. Um, I've mentioned in other videos my dad is sick and battling pancreatic cancer and at the end of October he just sent me a text message that basically said he missed me and wanted me to tell him stories which I my family will tell you tons of stories of me as a kid where they say oh Gucci it's my Persian nickname uh, tell me a story and then I look straight at the home video camera and just go and I just can tell stories on and on so when my dad kind of hinted in this text message that he needed me and I I just went so my husband and I drove 15 hours one way, we stayed for a week, we drove an 11 and a half hours the other way back. We're now back in Chicago in our quarantine bubble. I have not gone powerlifting, I will not go dancing. I went out to the grocery store once with gloves, a mask in the works, but because of that, you know, that takes a toll. I just didn't feel like reading, which a lot of times reading is my escape in the world. And when I'm asked to go home, it's really, I wanna be present, I wanna be right there. Now, thankfully, with 15 hours and 11 hours, there's time to listen for audiobooks because God knows there's nothing but cow country to stare at when you're driving from Chicago back into New York. So on a positive note, I'm here to talk to you about American Cheese. This book, American Cheese uh, by Joe Berkowitz, is an indulgent odyssey through the artisan cheese world. Obviously, we listened to this as an audiobook on Scribd since we were driving, but holy moly, this is a really fun book. This book is also very, very new. It came out in 2020. I believe it actually came out in February. And I can tell it's contemporary because the author is mentioning things like the election, President Trump, TikTok, all of this really, I don't wanna say modern, but food writing books tend to be dated. I tend to read within the past 20 to 30 years. So to have a book that's hot off the presses um, was a joy to read. What I really loved about Berkowitz's book is that it's super approachable. Berkowitz is married and for Valentine's Day, he takes his wife to a cheese tasting and his mind is blown. He's eaten one of the most delicious cheeses of his life and suddenly he's gone from thinking that the best cheese in the world was like Monterey Jack and sharp cheddar to I need to know everything about the cheese world. I should be very clear that the cheese world in this book focuses on American artisan cheese. A lot of people think like France that's where the best cheese is. And Berkowitz dives headfirst into the world of artisan cheese in America. I'll read the back for you guys just to give you a little bit of an idea of the book. Pop culture journalist Joe Berkowitz knew next to nothing about cheese other than he usually ate way too much pepper jack. After stumbling upon an art artisanal tasting at an upscale cheese shop though, he realized he'd hardly even scratched the surface. These cheeses were nothing that like anything he'd ever tasted. A visceral gut punch that reverberated deliciousness. And they were made in America, and he feel like he was being let on a great cosmic secret. And instantly, he was in love. In his first glimpse into dairy Narnia, an entire subculture of prestige cheesemakers, competitive mongers, cave-dwelling affineurs, dairy scientists and mixologists. And contrary to popular belief, this bustling cheese scene had been thriving in America as well, the land mostly known for the around the globe for producing waxy yellow singles. The discovery inspired Joe to embark on a food adventure of a lifetime, spending a year exploring the artisan cheese world, the underground cheese caves in Paris, to the mountains of Gruyere, and all across America. So that actually makes a lot of sense why he used a lot of pop culture lingo that was contemporary. He's a pop culture journalist, dug him. It, I loved his voice. His voice as a writer was so relatable. It was so much fun listening to him experience new things. Like he goes to a cheese tasting and he thinks it's themed. So he and his wife show up in like lederhosen and they wanna die. They're so embarrassed. But because of it, he meets somebody else and it leads to one meeting and another. And as he goes through the book, you see how small the cheese circle is in artisanal cheese America. And it's, you, it, they're all real people, but I was just falling in love with these characters. I wanted to root for them. They go to a global cheese competition that's very familiar to like the Boku store. It's like, they're making cheese sculptures. They have to weigh cheese by eye. It's insane. Like one guy's like a Dali inspired diorama made of cheese. 
I would kill to watch that. Where's the documentary about that? Don't give me another chopped spinoff. Like, show me someone making cheese art. How cool would that be? I loved this book. My husband loved this book. So I should preface that when Dan and I first started dating, he did not like cheese. He just didn't. And it wasn't something he grew up with. I grew up loving cheese. And because of me over the years, he's learned to taste more and more cheeses. I remember the first time he tried brie or goat cheese or blue cheese is still not his favorite. But because of this book, we were psyched. And I happened to be ordering groceries on the Sunday drive back because you know you want to come home and you just don't want to have to go out you don't want to come home to an empty fridge so you want to order some groceries ahead of time and I did so I was so lucky I found a wheel of cheese that was talked about in this book from my local grocer now it was like a $35 wheel of cheese it is an investment and it's not huge but he was so enamored by the book I loved this book we both really wanted to see what was Berkowitz like really was he really just hyping up the cheese or was it like the best brie he's ever had? So I'm gonna to cut to the footage of that tasting and hopefully you enjoy. Go back, do it again. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're filling cheese, Frank, fuck off. Go ahead, I'm recording. It's definitely recording now. It is, it, it's like basement mold. I mean, it does get, it does age in a cave, in a damp cold cave. Oh, it cuts through real soft though. Ooh, cut a small piece to start. Oh, maybe we should have a different, is there like a cheese knife? We don't have one. <laughs> No, hold on, hold on. I don't want to zoom in on the ooey gooey. Money shot. All right, now you can put it down and are you gonna eat it? Am I filming your reaction? We can film, I have our reactions. This is really, this is blue cheese? This is blue cheese? It looks like brie. I don't know. I've never had like a blue cheese, blue cheese that wasn't dry and crum crumbly, you know? I'll try it. Maybe I'm wrong and it is a brie, but I could have sworn it was a blue cheese. Guess it was similar to uh, a brie, be especially because of the the consistency. The skin here, the skin's not the right word. Rind. The rind, thank you, is similar to that of a brie, especially that, which is not. I don't have a lot of experience with blue cheese because it's gross. It's not gross. I know. I've never actually had it. And that's what I told myself growing up because it looked gross, and I didn't know cheese. I liked American. I was an American cheese household, an orange American cheese. White American cheese was exotic at the time. That was that was sort of branching out, but this is there's a lot of subtlety there. Uh, it's not a punch in the face like some of those you know those French cheeses that you hear about. That's like you know those those cartoon things that like there's a stink fist that punches you in the face. <laughs> this is it's definitely got a lot of flavors. It's like a, it's a there's a lot of beers like this where there's there's depth and flavor and you really have to think about it and taste it a few times. But it's it's delicious. It really is. It's not overwhelming. Uh, it, it's very casual, but it, it gives you a lot to think about and taste uh, while you're eating it. So I'm, I'm really impressed with it. Uh, is it worth $35 a pound? Pretty close. I mean, I don't have a point of reference, but it's it's good. I don't. I mean, are you are you done? So we can try it. I'm done. Oop. <laughs> well, that was easy. Turn it over. Dan made me gluten free bread. Would you like to cut a slice? Go get the bread knife. Bread knife. It actually looks like bread. And we're going to put the brie on the bread. Oh yeah, oh yeah, let's get, get that this. glamour shot. Ooh, bread. I'm sure people are gonna watch this and be like, what the fuck? Now it's correct so I can see red light. Okay. Maybe it is a brie. I just accidentally ordered the brie wheel. 
Either way, it's good, but I think it is a brie. I wish I had better adjectives. Because to me, it's a very smooth and consistent flavor. I don't get multiple layers of flavor like you do, but it's a delicious flavor. If you eat a decent amount of the size, there's like, there's a sweetness on the front, but there's like some earthiness in multiple flavor levels. On sort yeah, the of... rind is definitely very, very earthy. Yeah. It, it's not a one note cheese. No. Like I'm still getting flavors. It's probably know. the favorite cheese separate second only to like feta cheese because that's a Persian in me like this is a, a subtle cheese but I'm very pleased with mm. <laughs> that was cute sorry I'm very I'm very pleased with like the the dimensions it has I'd love to see it when it melts yeah okay so that was Dan and I trying this delicious cheese it was so decadent I could only have those two slices of bread with the brie Highly recommend you either warm the brie or warm your bread. Dan had cooked me that loaf of gluten-free bread, so he's also number one husband of the year. There's still some of it in the in the fridge. It's so worth it, so worth it. Definitely not a cheese I'm gonna buy every week. It's expensive, but oh my gosh, it was delicious. So let me know in the comments below, are you a cheese lover? Do you think you're a cheese connoisseur? Do you wanna become a cheese connoisseur? And what food do you want me to read about next? Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.